I'm Simon, this is the Mantis Garden, and today I thought what I would do, because I was doing it anyway, uh, was talk about Uthika and what to do with them and what happens when you get one. Well, let's start with what one is, uh, which we probably all gathered. It's uh, an egg case. Uh, basically, what it is, um, the female, who she's later named here, secretes uh, a set of proteins and a tanning agent. And when I say tanning agent, I don't mean the one that Donald Trump uses. The a tanning agent actually mixes with the proteins and sets into a hard shell. And you see that on uh, quite a few bugs, as it were, insects, etc. Uh, roaches are one of the ones that also use this method. Now, the eggs are laid inside the Uthika after they built up the foam. So you'll get the foam level, and then they'll put some eggs in, build up some more foam, put some more eggs in, and when they've all emptied of eggs, they'll seal it off. The Uthika dries, and eventually, hopefully, it hatches. Some are designed to last a little longer. Uh, this one isn't, because this comes from a, a, a tropical area, which means you can expect in six weeks time, I'm going to have little big Kirby eyes, which there's mother right now. Not happy because I've stolen her stick. Um, but some, like the European mantis uh, and the Chinese mantis, will lay a new thicker that can last the entire winter through snow, cold, rain, everything you can throw at it. And in spring, little baby nymphs will pop out. And there we go, it all starts all over again. Now, you think it can be like this one, which is a big bulbous golf ball type thing. Um, but they come in all different shapes of sizes depending on the species. Uh, this one, for instance, is a spiny flower mantis. And this one is a coronatus, which is the orchid mantis. Now, all these need to be removed if you intend. That's if they are fertile, of course. And the only way they're fertile is if you've had a male do the sexy time. If you haven't, then what you've got in your little enclosure there, you might as well throw it away because it isn't fertile. She's just laid it anyway because mantis do that sort of thing. They just pop them out and depending on species, depending on how many they will pop out. Things like Sibylla pretiosa, which is the cryptic mantis, can knock out anything up to 30 ooths before she dies off. These guys, four, five maybe maximum. So yeah, you've got a real good sort of variation depending on the species. But again, there's another reason for that. Sibylla pretiosa maybe have anywhere between 25 and 35 nymphs come out of their ooths. Whereas this guy could have 200. So it all works out in the end it levels up, isn't it baby, doesn't it? It all levels up, yes I'm insane, so that we get a fairly even amount of nymphs right across the board, which isn't so bad. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how to remove the youth. This one is going to be a, a bit of a different one, uh, and what to do with it after, and how to grow it to the point where you're going to get baby mantis. So without further ado, let's get on with that and we'll see where we go from there. When they've laid it on a stick like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the stick here and here. So I've got this little chunk of stick with the youth on it and this is like the ideal scenario because I don't have to mess with the youth, I don't have to take the youth off, I don't have to do anything with it. I, I, it's very difficult to damage the youth unless I'm really clumsy when it comes to cutting the piece of wood. The vibrations won't bother the, the nymphs or the eggs, which won't be in here right now. Um, so there's absolutely no problem at all me sawing that piece of wood. And then you can have the rest of your piece of wood back, can't you baby? But, or not, she jumped back on a wood. But. <laughs> but anyway, some mantis 
Come here. <laughs> Some answers will lay them on the side of your enclosure. These I would give uh, four to five days to harden up properly before you can remove them. They will be hardened up after a couple of days, 48 hours, um, but I would give them four or five days if you intend to take them off. These can be a bit tricky and it's just a case of peeling them off but not peeling them like that. You've got to sort of like slowly take them off maybe with your nails or something like that. You can, you can get behind them and pick them off to the side and then we can do something with this. So what we're going to do is get this one off here and I'll get into a pot and show you how I do that. So the first thing I need is a saw. Well sadly now I've got a short stick for clamps here but I do have this which is my Uthika untouched by human feet nicely available and I've not managed to disturb the youth at all from the stick so what I'm going to do with that is get this into a pot for actually developing. Now my pot, what am I going to do with that? Well we like, we, like, blah, blah, blah. we like to keep the youth nice and humid so we have a couple of choices here uh, we have keep that damp but the thing is I find with kitchen towel is it dries up very very quickly uh, and takes quite a lot of sprays to keep it damp which you then risk over humidity or at least getting the youth too wet and then it will rot and die and you'll end up with nothing coming out of it what we want to avoid is uh, any kind of uh, mold growing on this if we get mold we've got a problem the youth will die uh, if it dries up the youth will die <sighs> you know it's like in a bug world it's just everything you've got to do it how it's done outside or the youth will die Right, so what I tend to do is put some sphagnum moss in here, just a bit, not a great deal, in the bottom, like this, and we'll give that a bit of a spritz, and there we have damp sphagnum moss in the bottom, which will stay damp for quite some time actually. Uh, you still should come in and spray every day, but not directly at the booth, but we'll get onto that in a minute. So then, I have cut out the top of this 32 ounce cup, there's a lid, completely cut it out, no bits, which gives us lots and lots of ventilation, which will mean you lose lots and lots of humidity very quickly, but it also means your ooth will not rot. So what we've got, nice piece of organza mess, just that little nymphs climbing out when they do hatch and we're going to put that on there like so which is perfect I've even got a label on mine though but then I've got lots of different ones so there you go right so what I need for that is obviously my youth my bit of mesh and a tube of super glue so what I'm going to do is super glue this piece of wood directly onto here now it's perfectly fine to glue the back of the youth with super glue on there. Um, you can do this with hot glue. I tend not to because I'm afraid personally of the hot glue getting too hot and damaging the lower section of eggs, which is a problem with oofs like from Flower Mantis uh, and Pseudos because obviously you have to glue all the way along and that is uh, can be an issue of overeating the eggs in there and killing them off yourself. So super glue is, is really the best option. Um, Gorilla glue I believe also is another one that you can use. I have used it before uh, and not had any problems whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is stick a bit of super glue on the back of this lump of wood and I'm literally going to stuff that on in the center of my mesh and then give it a second to dry hopefully a second it takes a bit longer than that doesn't it okay so 
finally has decided to set. This is what you bought for buying one pound super glue from the local shop. Um, so all I'm going to do now is pop this. It's a bit difficult with the wood because it's heavy so therefore it's trying to pull it down. Now the reason why we do it this way and we want the, the youth facing down is because the little guys are going to dangle out of that youth. If I do this right, be okay. I grip it there, pull it through. There we go. And now I have my youth in there. Probably do close-ups. And we've got our spagnum moss in there. Now, once a day, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening as well, you've got to check to see if the moss is down. Just give the side, the side of the pot. And what I do with that now is pop it on a heat mat. And I turn the heat mat down so it's just generally warm. Uh, and, and keep it around 27, 28 degrees, uh, depending. Sometimes I turn it up a little bit more if I want a little bit faster, uh, but you're better off keeping it around 26, 27 degrees and around 70 to 80 percent humidity for most ooths. Um, some ooths may be a little less than that, uh, but they're, they're specific for, for certain species. But these guys, yeah, that'll do. That is all you need to do. If you see anybody with uh, Excelsior in here, um, be very, very wary of that for a simple reason. The nymphs, when they come out there, they will come out on like a little bungee rope string in a great big bunch normally. And they can travel a good two to three inches away from the, the end of the youth. So if you've got a load of Excelsior in there, they will bang their heads on there and you'll end up with a lot of uh, malformed nymphs. So I always avoid putting anything at all in the pot apart from a tiny little layer of either kitchen towel, damp kitchen towel or sphagnum moss at the bottom just to keep it there. If you see, depending on where you source your moss from, if you see any little flies in there or anything like that, um, it might be an idea to change the moss because we don't want anything, any bugs in there at all, uh, just in case they do anything nasty to the youth. There are uh, certain wasps and certain flies that will burrow into ooths, lay their eggs. The larva will eat the mantis eggs and then you end up with nothing. Uh, that's very, very rare in captivity, but depending on where you get your moss from, you never know what's in it. Uh, my moss here, I buy it in great big bags from China. So I have no idea what's in it or what could be in it. So if, if I see any flies or bugs in there, I, I, I get that out right away and use the old kitchen towel instead. But anyway, I hope this was informative. Um, also, if you're gonna have hooths like this, straight hooths, vertical hooths, you don't have to put them the way they was laid. That is another Mr. Moma, which is knocking around for some weird reason. You can actually put them horizontal like this on the surface and your little nymphs will bungee out of each little window in there. If you look in one of these hooths, there are tiny little, like a zipper that runs all the way across it. And there's tiny little windows in it. And each one of those windows, a nymph will pop out if you're lucky, if it, providing they're developed enough. These take around four to six weeks. I've had them action uh, just under four weeks and I've had them hatch just over six. Some species such as Desicata and some other dead leaves can take uh, anything up to 10 weeks, which is two and a half months. So two and a half months of keeping your eye on that oof and making sure it's cared for. So please remember this, not all species are going to act in five or six weeks. Some of them are going to take quite a bit longer. Um, even even things like uh, Creobota wilburki, which is a spiny flower, I've been known to take like months and months and months. I've had Kirby I take five months before, where I thought it was a dead youth, and I put it to the side, and it's actually hatched and took five months. So. You never 100% know, 
but I'd say I'm 90% sure that you're going to get babies within four to six weeks and then comes the hard part you've got to pop all those guys up and individual pots and then you've got to feed them all every day or two good luck with that see you later